What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the 2018 Ford Focus ST-Line Combi or estate, station wagon, whatever you want to call it. This new one is bigger than the one it replaces and it also adds a couple of high-end trim levels for the first time in the Focus's history. Today I'm driving the ST-Line variant, not to be confused with the full-on ST car that's coming later this year. And this is supposed to be a more sportier, regular focus. So first, let's focus <laughs> on the exterior. First, let me give you some general information about the new Focus. And please excuse the wind if it gets in the way of some proper sound today. I can't really do anything about it. It's really windy in the forest today. But anyway, there's five trim levels available in Sweden and you get four engine choices throughout the lineup with various power outputs. The car I'm driving today is the ST line trim. Like I've said before, it's equipped with a 1.5 three-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine at the front that produces 150 horsepower. Drive goes to the front wheels via an eight-speed automatic transmission. The ST-Line features sportier front and rear bumpers, a honeycomb grille at the front, beefier side skirts, and twin tailpipe exhausts at the back. Then we have 17-inch alloy wheels as standard painted in this gunmetal gray and this S-Line is 10 millimeters lower than the regular Focus. It also has different settings for the dampers, stiffer springs and revised anti-roll bars. We have an electrically operated tailgate, a huge boot and then we have LED tail lights and full LED headlights to complete the look of the car. Now let's jump on the inside. So yeah, this is the interior of the new Ford Focus ST line. Material quality is pretty good for this price point. You even have some carbon fiber over here. Now nah, I'm just joking, it's just plastic. And overall, I think the car is pretty spacious on the inside. There's this huge panoramic roof that makes it feel even more spacious than it actually is. And really, there's nothing to complain about, practicality and size-wise. So let's start off on this part of the dash. And the first thing I want to show you is the Ford Focus's head-up display. You go down here, press this button, and then press OK on the steering wheel, and then it pops up. It's not the fanciest solution out there, but it's uh, pretty good actually. You have all the information you need on it, and well, it does its job. Now, the steering wheel has a flat bottom for some reason. It's fully covered up in leather. You have perforated leather on the sides. Then over here we have an eight inch touchscreen display on this car in particular. It's got sat nav, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, whatever you want. Don't mind this bit over here. This is sort of a pre-production car and it didn't have the automatic climate control. But don't worry, all new cars come with that as standard now. One thing I particularly like about this car is this gear selector over here. That's kind of similar to what Jaguar has. But I think this is a really good solution for all car makers that offer their cars with an automatic transmission. It just frees up the entire space over here and it makes room for storage spaces, basically. Down here we have a wireless charging pod for your phone, a USB input. Let's see what else. Oh, the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. It's absolutely excellent. I love it. Excellent sound quality for the money. But that's kind of it. 
Let's take this car on those roads to see how it drives. Well, if a regular Ford Focus ST line drives this good, sign me up for the Focus ST test drives right now. Even though this is just a regular Ford Focus, this car rides and handles better than many hot hatches on sale right now. It's excellent and you can properly thrash it around these forest roads that I'm driving right now. The car has very good mid-corner grip and there's just a slight hint of understeer just to be safe. But my favorite thing about it is how you can adjust this car's line through a corner just by using the throttle pedal. Feed in the power and the car becomes more stable, more neutral, but back off and then you tighten the line that the car is taking through that corner and eventually the rear end will start to rotate as well. This is so typical of Ford, it really does remind me of the way the Fiesta ST used to handle. It's absolutely excellent. Body control is good, the car does lean a bit in the corners, but just a touch. The ride is a tad bit firm, but it's not uncomfortable and the dampers deal really well with bumps in the surface of the road. And all of this just makes you wonder if Ford put so much thought and effort into the way this car drives. Imagine how the ST and RS variants will feel like. <laughs> oh yes! The steering is another highlight for me. Its weight feels very natural in the hands and because of that you're able to place the car exactly where you want it on the road. It's quick, it gives you decent feedback from the road, and it's very confidence aspiring. I just love it. The engine is a 1.5 three-cylinder turbocharged petrol unit. It can produce 150 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. It's essentially a detuned version of the engine featured in the Fiesta ST I drove a couple of months ago. And even better, especially for a family car, it retains the ability to shut down one of its cylinders to save fuel. 0 to 100 km per hour is dealt with in 9.1 seconds for the estate. And I swear to you, the car feels much faster than those figures suggest. And I have to admit that I only looked at the spec sheet of this engine after I drove it a bit. And I was very surprised when I read the numbers out loud. Anyway, the engine's throttle response is very good for a three-pot and once you're above 2000 RPMs, the boost builds up quite quickly. The three-cylinder engine sound is more noticeable in this car because it doesn't have a loud exhaust or a louder exhaust like the Fiesta ST had, but unfortunately you can't fully exploit what this engine has to give you because of this rubbish transmission. So with that being said, let's move on to the things I don't really like about this car. And the gearbox is the only thing on that list. Unfortunately, around town, it's not very smooth. You can actually feel every single shift the car makes. I mean, it's quick to respond and everything, but it's just not smooth at all. And there's also another annoying thing about it when driving this car around town. Every single time you're above 2000 RPM and you lift off, the car just wants to upshift. And that's really annoying because if you want to accelerate the car to get going again, it's then downshift. So that's two pointless shifts in just a couple of seconds. And also when driving the car fast in manual mode, if you want to just go for a blast on a B road, up shifts are really slow, unfortunately. But I don't know, after driving this car with this transmission, I totally understand why ST and RS models in Ford's lineup don't come with automatic transmissions. <laughs> yeah, not because Ford doesn't want to offer them with automatics, it's just because they don't have a proper one. So, 
What's my take on the new Ford Focus ST line? Well, it's a very, very good car when driving fast. It's comfortable and refined when you're just cruising around. It's practical and spacious, and it's pretty well priced too. Just make sure you get the manual, please. So that's been it for today's video, my friends. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you have, and subscribe to Tuned Into Cars for lots more videos to come. And until next time, take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you around.